Hi, this video I want to talk about live events in Teams. So this is different from a meeting. So I can go meet now here uh, as we've done before in Teams and I can uh, turn my camera on and off and I can uh, then choose who it is that I want to meet with. But you've also got this option of running something called live events. So if I go to a new meeting over here in the right and under the new meeting at the top here I can just create a new meeting and invite people to it or I can create a live event. When you're setting up a live event you get some more options and you get some options as a producer you see over here to basically uh, let's say mute all the microphones of everybody who joins the call. So if you have a large number of people that you're wanting to uh, join in on an event this is the way to go. So I'm going to call this a test event I can give it a location, I can give it a start time, an end time, and I can give details here about the event and what's going on. So the details would go here. Uh, I can invite other people as presenters. So if I wanted to, just typing people's names, these people are going to be co-presenters and I can use them to actually uh, put materials up on the screen and kind of co-present with me. Now there's three options on the next page that you get for your live event. You can identify a particular people or groups that you want to invite. So you could invite the whole of Year 7 if you wanted to. That's all of the Year 7 students will get an invite uh, to watch this live event. Or you could do it by class. So if I use the code S dash and now put in the class code, so 07MTH you'll see all of the Year 7 Maths classes. So I could invite just my Year 7 Maths class to this live event if I wanted to. So putting in codes in there or year levels uh, will help you to give permission or access to the live event to particular people. If I wanted to invite a whole house, there I'm inviting everybody that's in Cowan, for example. Okay, the second one here is org wide, which means everybody at the organisation, at the college, could watch this live event but they need to sign in. So you're going to be giving people a link and then they can access this live event. Or you could go public. So when you get a link, I'm going to show you on the next page, anybody who clicks on that link will be able to get involved in this event. Options down here, we're going to use Teams to do this. Um, recording is going to be available to us afterwards and available to attendees. You can turn these off and on because after our live event people are going to be able to watch a replay and you can select Q&A. So I think that's a great one because during the live event people can ask questions and answer each other as we go along. So I'm going to click on schedule Alright, so now once I've scheduled it you can see I've got get attendee link all right, so now that link is what I give people to invite people to this live event. So you could put that link anywhere via an email or it's on a team that you want to give it to. Uh, put that link in there and they will be able to then attend this live event. If I click on join, you can see I've got my camera going here. I can turn the camera off. By default, my microphone's muted as well. I can turn that on and I can click on join now. So the event isn't live yet, but you can get an idea of what's happening here. You've got kind of a, a preview of what stuff that you're pushing out, and this is what actually is going on in the live event here. So if I was to uh, unmute myself uh, and turn the camera on, let's say, what I could do is send that video to the queue. So this is what is being prepared for people. And if I want to, I can send it live. So now, this is the live content that people are seeing. There's a fraction of a delay there. And if I click on start, any people that I've given that link to would then be able to start participating in this live event. So I'm going to click on start. So now I'm live streaming out to anybody who has that link there. Uh, this is what they're seeing and this is in the queue. So if I click on share, I can share other things that's on my computer. So for example, if I wanted to share this notebook, now this notebook is being shared to everybody. You'll see me in the corner, but you also they'll see mainly my screen. You can see at the top, I've got similar things here where I can give control to other people who are there in the call. Okay, so once I've got that up, I can see uh, this is what um, people, and I can hit send live, and then that will send my desktop 
live to the screen so people that what they're seeing now I've got a Q&A over here so there isn't any new questions that have come in there but I could see if I wanted to uh, questions I can make an announcement on here and say hello to everybody so there's a kind of a communication channel that can go on in the background while it is that I'm running this live event and again this would be really good for large groups of people because you'll see them all come in along the bottom here and I can click on mute all which will then mute all of the microphones for everyone there at the moment I'm sharing this screen here so I'm going to click on stop sharing and the live event will continue in a moment so nothing's on the screen at the moment so if I want to choose another one let's say this uh, PowerPoint presentation yep so that's the PowerPoint presentation that we're wanting to share if I go back to my team and there it is there you can see that that's now being shared to the screen at any time during the live event I can invite specific people to come along so I can either copy the join info and send that this is during the meeting or um, just invite people specifically by name or groups and then straight away it will call that person and they can then be a part of this live event so this per calls that person straight away can click on mute all to make sure that their microphone's not working and we can uh, go from a meeting chat for individual people or an open chat with everyone that people can then thumbs up etc so uh, when I'm finished I just click on end and say end that line of event